Hello, welcome to this episode of Get the Fork Out. I am in sunny Palma de Mallorca. The interview uh, you're about to see with my friend Ed Dunnett. He is in uh, Nice, in the south of France, and I'm recording it from the boat I work on in Croatia. We are gonna talk about the business that he co-founded with his wife and mother of their two children, uh, Jess Dunnett. We're gonna talk about onshore sellers, which is a wine provisioner inside the industry. Both of them spent time as deckies and stews and uh, it's really cool. I love these stories where people that are in the industry uh, see a niche that they want to not necessarily exploit, but like, well, I think we can do it better, cheaper, better service. So we hear um, their story through Ed and then everything that kind of happened during COVID, like all the changes they had to make um, just because COVID was hitting them and us all in our faces. I just think these stories are interesting. These are ex-yachties that had to go through some massive changes. And Ed is a good buddy of mine, so uh, we have a little bit of fun making fun of each other. I hope you guys like it. Enjoy. That's weird. Good evening, everyone. Happy quarantine. Very sensual. I almost press leave meeting when it said it's been recorded. I'm, I forgot what we were doing. <laughs> it's a natural reaction. Wait a minute now. It's the time to go. Um, yeah, yeah. You get caught right. out too many times on Zoom. Yeah. Should all we right, start? let's do it. All right. Yeah. I'm going to do this weird clap thing because then I, if I do this, I know then. Okay. All right. Oh, Welcome to right. Get the Fork Out, everyone. Oh, you're talking over my intro, you son of a bitch. This is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be a challenge. This is gonna be a challenge. Yeah. I can tell. <laughs> I might leave that in. All right. Are we ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Welcome to Get the Fork Out, everyone. Uh, this week we have Ed Dunnett, one of my dear friends, uh, ex Yachty. Used to be in the game. Used to be in the game. Left the game for another okay. brand new game that is uh, basically just onshore sellers. He is a wine uh, provisioner, and he does all kinds of cool stuff within that space to help crew, maybe with investments, with wine storage. But we will get to all of that. Ed done it. Welcome to Get the Fork Out. How you doing, man? Thanks, mate. Yeah, I'm really well. Thanks for having me on. I've been watching your last ones, and we've been trying to do this for a while, actually. So I'm glad we've got to it. <laughs> It's, yeah it's always a struggle sadly both it, busy yes yes both very busy yeah, yeah. uh it's not always my fault but it's mostly my fault because i'm i'm constantly moving and now oh, it's trying to do it when you were in uh on a different time zone as well and trying to figure out when we could share a glass of wine together with yeah. a 10 hour difference and, and we're not as young as we used to be when drinking 24 hours a day was whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 If I have a glass of wine at 9 a.m., I don't know what that day looks like now. You know, I, yeah, don't, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know what that, that, <laughs> that morphs into. Yeah. That, so when I was in California, yeah. I, I was trying to do these interviews uh, via via Zoom on... Uh, you can come in. Yeah, just leave it here. Yeah, yeah just leave a pile. Anyway. Oh, okay. Is it your dirty laundry again? The girls have yeah, folded it's, it up. It's, right like, this it's time. the crew. Yeah. The crew platters are back. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So recording on the West Coast was very hard. It's a ten-hour difference, and just coordinating times is absolutely brutal. I'm glad it's over. I am in Croatia. Ed, where are you? Talk to us. Where yeah, are you? Uh, we're. Uh, I'm in, in on TV actually, just outside. Um, nice. Yeah. Just uh, we've got. This is my new warehouse. I won't, I've got a big computer, so I won't sort of try and swing Epic. around. And it, it's pretty... Could you? It's not messy. Could you try yeah, to... it's messy. Could you yeah, pick I'll, up the I'll have a quick, and... sc <laughs> quick scan. <laughs> you can see how heavy this is. Oh, the trap. You fell we're, the uh, trap. we're sort of mid-beginning of the season awesome. and kind of mid sort of getting everything in here and together because we've moved. We had a shop in Antibes and... Uh, Last year, sort of proved retail was fairly buggered. So we've moved wow. to a bigger space and I've got some new staff and uh, new things are happening. And yeah, it's exciting. And it's certainly easier for me, I think, being here rather than trying to land stuff in a tiny little shop and, and essentially operate what should be a warehouse business 
out of a pedestrian zone and onto you was was testing. Well, that was actually one of my questions of how, how COVID uh, affected you. And for those that don't know, Onshore Sellers, the name of Ed's business, had this amazing boutique wine shop <laughs> in the heart of uh, this walled, uh, castled uh, medieval city in the south of France. It, it was an epic shop. So then COVID happened, and like you just said, Ed, it, it just dried up retail. Yeah. So is that, is that shop no longer? Uh, we've let the shop go. I think last year, not I think, we did 10% in the retail, <laughs> what we'd done the year before. So it was, we were, revenue was lower than rent. So it was a bit of a no brainer to leave. Yeah, it was sad. We'd I put a lot of work into, um, I know you did. What was, I thought was a really epic store. It was kind of an old, yeah, 400 year old, uh, uh place in the center of an old town in, in France. <laughs> But we eventually grew out of it. So, uh, yeah, COVID had a huge effect on us. I think, like everyone, um, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it was it was uh, a fairly fairly sharp impact as well. We lost like a, a huge amount of quotes and orders were lost within a week. And so, what we were looking at was we we'd stocked up and got ready for the season. And you know, pre season we probably put 100, 150 grand into sort of quick moving stock and bits like that and we pre-ordered things that would be difficult to get for the summer so when that all sort of dropped off uh yeah well, we had to try and think of ways to diversify and uh and not having the retail outlet that no one was allowed in uh we, we yeah we've done a lot to sort of try and weather that storm but thankfully we've got lots of our bigger clients uh have just been going it's um it's been useful to have uh have some fairly loyal clients and, and the ability to ship anywhere means that actually it didn't make, in the end, it didn't make a huge difference, but at the beginning it was, yeah, it was pretty scary. I uh, think, well, I certainly business wise and obviously health wise and worried about everyone else as well. But right. um, yeah, at the beginning yeah, I, we were, uh, it was fairly worrying. No, it's, I think it's been interesting to watch um, friends and family do, do massive pivots during this time where, you know, it's quite aggressive and I wouldn't wish it on any of any of us, but you've seen some really remarkable yeah. outcomes. I think it's, it's been quite, quite cool. Yeah, if I can, I think I'm allowed to say that to, to watch people morph into for, something. For us, Probably a little bit more uh, streamlined. Oh, I knew you'd yeah, be Yeah, for us, it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but Stanford. if anyone else is watching, I do have a habit of interrupting Brendan <laughs> just on purpose. Yeah. And yeah. By accident, so, uh, it's like a tick really. Uh, yeah. Usually it's with a pun. Yeah, it's been, it's been uh, you know what, as, 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 shit, as shit as it's been, it's been really useful exercise. We have done a load on the business in terms of our processes, our inventory system, and then diversifying, and we found new clients outside of yachting, so we're not so reliant on one specific industry. And That's at amazing. the end of the day, we sell wine, so you know everyone drinks, and we notice a huge uptick online in, in the sense of people just drinking more at home and not getting into restaurants. So they're spending more at home on different wines. And yeah, so out of every disaster, there is normally an opportunity, but it's been, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of work from all the team and, and everyone here sort of just trying to work under fairly strained conditions. Um, but yeah, I'm glad we appear to be, I don't know they're on the other side of it, but we appear to be closer <laughs> at least. Yeah, I don't know. yeah completely. And, and more streamlined for... Yeah a future without retail but hopefully that's not the case yeah, exactly. we, we don't know yet well i mean everyone's buying everything online and i think once you realize how easy it is it's hard to go back and for me did i buy i used to buy wine online before um starting on shore sellers and it's it's more of a case of that it would just be at my door i don't need to drag it around the supermarket and i can find <laughs> exactly what i want and i don't have to drink stuff that's only sold in supermarkets because i'm too lazy yeah. to go to a great store like onshore sellers <laughs> right plus um, you, you can avoid the, yeah, the judgmental think... stares of the of the checkout clerk just yeah like, why, yeah why are yeah. you judging me just let me buy my wine well i've got uh i've got a couple of friends around here i'll name him because i, I do want to shame him chris irish <laughs> who uh who has <laughs> who has to buy stuff he buys through us then he buys in the supermarket and he buys somewhere else because he's too embarrassed to buy the whole lot from one place. 
the amount he drinks. <laughs> right. No, I get it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spread it around. So uh, no, no judgmental stares from a checkout clerk, please. No. No. Yeah, exactly. So um, how's life with you, Bren? How's, uh, how's this, this new thing you're... Uh, how's, how is this Get the Fork Out going? I've been watching uh, it fairly regularly. It's going well. I feel like it, it's fun to do. So yeah, I, I try not to look at the numbers because I, it's not why I do it, but I end up learning so much stuff from, from you guys and I love doing it. And it's, uh, but it just takes, a, you know, unfortunate thing is it, it takes a bit of time to organize, you know, with other people that are in different time zones have Wi-Fi. I spend so much time looking for goddamn Wi-Fi. Like it is, it's probably what I do more than interview is like, I'm, I'm going around with my phone, literally like with uh, uh, speedtest.net. If anyone wants to figure out how fast your Wi-Fi yeah. is, speedtest.net. And you go around and you're like, okay, this is good. I got 22 megabyte upload or 22 megabyte download. It's like, oh man, I was in a campground in California. Just like, oh man, I wish I had a film of that, just me looking for Wi-Fi. Cause it's, it, I do it more than interviews, like I said. But it's going well. Like I really like it. It's yes. just it's trying to trying to find the time. I, I'm luckily I'm I'm on a I'm on a vessel that will allow me to keep doing them. Uh, so it's once a week. Yeah. Try to, but it's a struggle, man. It's just not it's not it's easy just, to find it's the time. A, I mean, I ask because we've we've started doing more stuff on YouTube and other sort of social media things and and a different outlet to marketing because obviously there's no. There's no boat shows at the moment. And there's, it's right. difficult to go and do, or certainly last year was difficult to dot walk. So you've still got to get, and we used to do a lot of events at the shop. And yeah, and I ask because it, it's a lot of work trying to diversify into doing online um, media. So videos, yeah. interviews, and podcast. And, and it is, there's a lot of work involved and it's fairly relentless. And it takes seemingly a long time to sort of build something up. So. Yeah, it's, it's I, nice I to watch what you're doing and, and see how it's building and how we can learn from me. I guess we're learning from you as well. And uh, oh, we're and yeah, we're get, learning from each other. Get, I like the word relentless. Get content out. Like, yeah. you, you get like a bit reprieve of after you do one, and then you should be actually filming the next one and getting ready. And it's like it always feels like a last second thing. And then um, obviously, you know, it gets up, so uploaded first to Yachting International Radio, and then I post it a week or two later. So it's yeah, well, I'm. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm gonna get some help. I think my um, oh, internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, I think it, uh, I'm getting some yeah. help. I got this guy, a friend of a friend, who's gonna help me with the editing um, because hopefully doing some more quarantine kitchen type stuff. So as much as I said it's relentless, I'm about to add to it. So yeah, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Yes. Um, but just to get someone to help. Well, it's 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 consistency. I think as well. It's it's. Mm. yeah so you, you need to have you need to be doing it every week and every no matter what without fail you're like no matter what i know what your lifestyle's like having been on a boat it's it's it just there's so many things that can come up that take you yeah. away from what you plan to yeah. do just in work let alone when you start getting out with the crew and drinking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I have this analogy it's like with other chefs that you're always in the shit as a yacht chef like, it's not like a restaurant chef where you're like, oh, I come in, you know, I prep myself up the day before. I should be good going in today. It's like, even when you're completely prepared, you're always kind of in the shit because you do not know what can happen. The weather could kick up, you know, so, so three guests could show up. Like, all these things yeah. can just, the variables are insane, as you already know. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But, the, the, you know, never let the job suffer. That's the most important part. But if I can find the time, um, I'll do it. If I can't, can't do it got to pay the bills man yeah yeah it's um it's yeah it's also an interesting for me it's quite a new it's certainly a new area for me it's interesting it's interesting to see how people to consume information where they get yeah. it from what they're yeah. listening to and it, you know it's it's trying to understand it as well when you uh I'm, I'm not necessarily a huge user of social media or, or youtube or any of the other sort of platforms so it's for me, it's even bigger learning curve, not really understanding why people watch these yeah. things anyway. But uh, yeah, I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts. It's probably just showing my age rather than anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it, it, I don't yeah, think Yeah, but you're right. Any, anything it's comes up. And it's, uh, yeah, so people, gotta, things I'm, just come up all the time. Yeah, I got to bring up my lighting. So it, I'm using a camera that's international, but the... I, if I have the, the lighting on in the galley, 
it just it flickers like crazy so that's why it looks like there's a flashlight on me i'm just looking at myself now like, like ridiculous but uh, <laughs> that's fine like i'm using this little like <laughs> because there'll be this like crazy ass flicker if i just leave the lights on um and excuse me why don't you talk about some of the yeah. investment opportunities <laughs> that uh you used to do or i don't know do you still do those sort of oh. things for, for crew in, in wine um yeah you, you know, most of them are more for sort of originally when we set up the business, I had an idea which was to, I mean, we started this with relatively very little money. And so I was looking at exploring options into how to create a stock business without having to finance it myself. So I was looking at investments for crew, so crew buy wine. Uh, as it's released as an investment with a, you know, potentially looking to sell it in five years or 10 years or drink it for themselves. The idea was to create a stock for myself. I could then call on the crew and then I have, a, rather than just offering to sell them the wine and I have an actual offer, you know, in three or four or five years time, we have a route to market for you and we're, right. we can sell it direct to the boats and that it's an easier way to cash out. And typically if you're investing wine in London, they take a percentage at the beginning, a percentage at the end, they charge you for storage fees. And the reality is you probably wouldn't walk away with much. But that's a whole nother business in itself. So I didn't, I, I did a few bits. I've done some stuff with you and some other friends. And more recently, I've put together a, a group of us to buy a uh, Cask McAllen, which is quite cool, I think. Oh, yeah. You're so pushing that. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I've got a... I won't say how much it is, but it's it's in the <laughs> hundreds of thousands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's absurd. Yeah. Uh, quite a quite a few hundred thousand, and it's uh, a twenty four year old Carson McCallan. And again, the view is it's actually just a group of friends and some clients and uh, and some of their friends actually. And it's it's just a casual <laughs> casual investment of casual. Uh, yeah, casual. Oh, hopefully, we'll be able to. Um, We'll sell it 24 years old now. So the view is to try and sell it at 30 years. And in theory, if we're, if I'm right, we'll, we'll make a, a reasonable return. But like all right. of these things, it's an investment it's speculation. What I, what I quickly discovered is I don't want to start selling things to crew uh, and then realize that or not realize. And then the market changes. And then you're the guy who's taking the shit about their investment yeah. going down. Right. stick to the core of core of what we sort of started with um and jess and i my wife and i who started this we were on yachts for it was eight years and jess was a little longer she stayed on to pay for some of this and uh yeah we, we just thought we'd create something that was kind of crew helping crew so that was the original concept and onshore sellers was the name and in, in the sense that you had your sellers ashore and that you could keep your wine here rather than ruining it on the yachts. And we, we just organized all the logistics for the owner's house and yacht and everything from one singular place. And you just carry what you need around rather than, you know, 4 million euro of wine on a boat for three years. It's, it's not going to age it very well. So that was the concept. <coughs> and obviously once you start a business, <laughs> your, uh, your ideals are, are, or what you want to achieve is, is effectively tempered by, Compromises yeah. and reality of finances, etc. So yeah, it's, it's been a long old slog. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think we've we've done what we aimed to do, which is was set up. Let me think one second, Brendan. I'm just going to pass yeah, yeah, this over to. Um, oh, this is going to be a live phone call. Watch everyone as he uh, passes on the responsibility to someone else. Let's see how long it takes. Um, twice. Oh, that was fast. Sorry, I've got. Well, that was fast. Doing, doing nothing. No, I passed it over. I've got. I'll, thankfully, we've got I'll, staff now. <laughs> I was narrating. I yeah. was just just wondering how long it would take okay. for you to pass the responsibility over. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty good at passing the buck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, um, what what, what I, boat did I, you work on? What, what 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 was your time? Tell us a little bit about your time in yachting and like. What boats? Oh, Where'd you go? Gosh. So I, I came down here. Uh, one thing led to another, and I ended up doing five years living up in Val d'Azur, sort of 
originally going to be six months and then ended up there sort of summers and winters for five years and thought nice place. at some point I need to get back to reality. So I thought I'd take the summer off and help a couple of mates out who were captains on boats who'd work the, work the winters up in the Alps and come captain in the summer. And so I had day work for the summer. So I came down here to bum around effectively and, and enjoy the sun and the beach and fell into yachting. I wasn't going to take a full-time job. I wasn't looking for a full-time job, but I got offered a job in uh, Doha in Qatar and Ooh. just thought, it's an opportunity to go and live somewhere where I don't think I'll ever have an opportunity or in a region where I've never right. thought I'd live and an experience that actually I never thought I would, would have. So I took it. Um, I think instantly we regretted it actually probably within the first hour of being off the plane. Because of the sand? <laughs> was the sand issue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, maybe I hadn't given it enough thought. <laughs> it's quite a culture shock, but it was, I'm glad I did it. I enjoyed it. Good, I was there for eight minutes. Definitely. Yeah, one second. One second. Yeah. yeah, one second. So we have, uh, it's 129, counting down. Yeah. Oh, that was even faster. Ed. That was only three seconds. Oh, this, there's a delivery, but I've closed the uh, the big shutter. Just so lock them out. <laughs> yeah. No more delivery. I'm, I'm trying to mid minimize disturbances today. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm glad I I'm glad I did it. It was fun. It was an eye opener. I, I learned a lot about I think people in general in the in the sense that yeah, you have these preconceptions of different cultures and places. And in reality, I think people are wholly the same in every every country. There's a certain level of people you like. There's a certain level of people you yeah. never like, and there's the rest of the ourselves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was good. Uh, I, I, I did enjoy it. I believe it's the same ratio of assholes across the board. As much as we like to single out groups it of people. It definitely is, yeah. Like, no, nah, they're assholes. It's like, no, nah, I mean, this is a little thing I cooked up on the motorcycle trip. Is like, just everyone has, 99.9% .9 of people are good. Everyone wants to be loved and to, to love and to be loved. And everyone has these families that they want to take care of. Therefore, at the core of it, we're, we're identical. We're completely identical. There's no yeah. way inside those parameters that you're allowed to be assholes unless, one caveat, you're either thirsty or you're hungry. And I don't mean like hangry. I mean my baby starving. Yeah, yeah. Then you tend to yeah, do no. things a little more violent. You get a little more aggressive. Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, social context plays a big role in how you are in the sense if if, if you need to eat what would you do to eat? Right. Especially if you need your family to eat. So then, yeah. But yeah, as, as, a, as a rule, without getting too deep, and neither of us are psychologists, but we've spent a lot of time drinking, so we understand <laughs> everything. <laughs> pontificating. I believe it's called pontificating. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, um, a, uh, it's, a, it's yeah. a cool world out there, though. Like, and you, it, it's so much safer than you realize once you understand that everyone is innately good you need to be aware of yeah yourself. most people are there to help and that most people exactly yeah yeah and, and they want the experience you know you're going out to different like as you're traveling around the world you're going for an experience and the experience is there for you but also the people you meet the experience of it's, meeting some weird american chef who's traveling the world right. on the bike yeah no, I, yeah. I would, if I had a superpower, I would so be able to speak every single language in the world because the capacity for adventure in another language, in another country, is so much higher. Like you would just get abducted in the best way into the coolest adventures yeah. on the planet if you could speak every language. And that's what I would want because you just stumble around, you do the touristy stuff, and it's fun. But it's also understanding the, uh, the the cultural differences, don't you? If you understand the language, you understand and you understand the background of the culture. You know, I li I've lived in France, and I still find the culture in France actually quite strange. Well, it doesn't, Difficult. it shouldn't appear to be too different. We should be English and French. You'd think they're fairly similar, but the core social culture of France is. It's, it's difficult to understand, difficult to understand but yeah i think yeah. if you understand the education system you understand the language you understand why people have a different approach to things that you think are so logical another way 
But yeah, it's all yeah. these subtle differences that makes people different. Yeah, but the core isn't in the stone. Gaining perspective. It's getting on, deep, on Brennan. Things. This is getting it's very good. deep. It's good. Yeah. Get the fork out, man. Let's get it out. Let's get it yeah. out. Um, it's all what, about, so, uh, yeah. What about, so you've made this massive pivot from retail to warehouse. And like, I, I think you had a really good point too about how you were basically trying to do a warehouse business out of a shop. And then once you realize that, probably because of COVID, let's get a warehouse and just the retail. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the goal last year was to have a warehouse in addition to the shop. And uh, right. just because we were we were year four of a six year a rolling lease anyway, we effectively had another two years that we'd have to pay for. So, um, thankfully with COVID that helped us negotiate out of it. However, right. uh, without COVID, we would have took took we would have taken a warehouse in addition to the shop. And the shop is a really cool. It was it was set up effectively for a showroom. So. Yep. You pull into one team, yep. you can bring your crew. We used to do loads of events with the whole interior team or the whole uh, the whole yacht or even the owners would come in. We'd do private tastings and we'd do stuff for the locals as well. And we'd have, but yeah, all sorts of fun events going on. And that was, I think, yeah, two or three we took the shop and that sort of completed what we were trying to do, which was be somewhere where the crew can come and hang out and, you know. Yeah. Crew. That was our, that was kind of our uh, motto, I guess. Crew helping crew for a long time. I think it yeah. still is. Mantra. Um, yeah. Well, you know, we understand it from both sides, and it's difficult from both sides. And you, you kind of understand why people are being so pedantic about the size of a Perrier bottle, or, or <laughs> so pedantic it's so about true. the opening on. That's it's it. so true. It's gonna <laughs> fit in this fridge. You it know, fit in the fridge I'm without the having without having lived it. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't lived the other side of understanding why your owner's wife just wants the sports cap Evian 32 centiliters that are only made in Estonia shipped in just for her trip, you're like, this is mental. But yeah. Uh yeah, so we understand why why it's so Right, you know, so important to, I guess to get it could get it right because yeah. ultimately it comes it's on their head and they have to deal with potentially someone who's less than happy about it who doesn't see the funny side of drinking out the wrong size Evian bottle. <laughs> it's not humorous, it's not humorous. <laughs> what what does your season look like? Yeah. Like are you seeing comparable numbers? No, it's not, but I mean numbers? I just jump track. Yeah, to this last uh, month. I mean, I've, I've, yeah, no, I've. This last month, we've, um, I've, since COVID, I've decided rather than contract and try and make everything smaller, I've expanded. Contract <laughs> sort COVID. Of counterintuitive, and I looked at it as, well, I look, when we contracted certainly in our revenue last year, but I've spent more money this year with a view that while everyone else is suffering the same as us, likely it's a good opportunity yeah. to come guns blazing and uh, you know with the right support knowing that we've got we're going to need more people to do things because everything takes longer and it's more difficult and so make sure we're fully crewed and ready and last month was testament to I think our preparedness we had a best month certainly for over a year our best uh, yeah it's been a, it was an amazing month and I think looking forward it's hard to get overexcited having seen stuff change so rapidly last year. Yeah. But, I feel, uh, yeah. but yeah, I think it's looking like a good summer. But you, you, you know what can happen is we've got charters booked this year. Um, I'm, I'm hesitant to get excited until we've delivered because last year we had charter orders booked and we we're ready to go and sold. And in the end, you just, yeah. So uh, I think this summer's, we all hope, I think we'll, we'll see end of June once they open up some more restrictions in France and Italy and Spain and lots yeah. of boats. I think you're, you're in Croatia now, no? Yeah, we have a 10-week yes. charter starting in a couple of days. So it's it's our yeah. season is going to be good, but that would, we were just the kind of the lucky ones that would book these clients that have been booking boats for, you know, over a year for to stay away from COVID. So no, it's a good, it's yeah. definitely, it's good to have, but it's no, I can't use our 
like charter bookings as a barometer of whether or not the season's going to pick up or the season's going to go back to normal. But I, I hear what you're saying about the we're all missing that foundation of stability that we used to have, where it's like I think it's going to be good. Yep. It feels good yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. in a week, it could be all oh, gone. Sucks. I think you're seeing it with people not spending their savings and saving more. Well, the fact yeah. that you can't go out anyway. But I, I yeah, I have a. <laughs> <laughs> for us i'm just a little bit more cautious this year than actually last year as well but you yeah. know you just it'd be great to think it's going to be a nice long summer but anything can as we've proven but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm quietly confident to, to it's great <laughs> quietly a really confident. long answer to a Is, simple question i have never confident. heard the term quietly confident put towards you ever before yeah, uh, yeah. boisterously confident loudly confident yeah, that's usually Ed's, Ed's kind of MO. Yeah, we'll see. Certainly the charter bookings we're seeing, like yours, are longer. I think people, yeah, if they're going to come going away, why, why not go away for two months? And we've all proven we can work from wherever. So yeah. if you've got a, a boat with decent internet, it doesn't really matter where you are anymore. It's uh, a lot of remote working, everything, all the shopping and stuff can be done online. And why not go and have a, a chef cook for you every day and people pamper you and you know, exactly. if you've got the money, let's spend it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that yeah, is, yeah. that has been a, a truth too. I think there's a delay on this call. So if it sounds like I'm interrupting you, I'm not, it's just a delay. Um, although sometimes I do need to interrupt you because, uh, well, you know why, uh, but there's a, uh, yeah. there's a way like, does this go forward? These long ass charters, that's, that's the thing. And I do, I mean, I guess it just depends on COVID and, and how the, yeah, the vaccines work or or not let's see yeah, yeah I, I i guess so i think i don't know it's a uh, time will tell yeah yeah time will tell but yeah. it's all hope that uh, everyone at least has a busy enough summer i mean us and everyone else in the yachting market are just for those who struggled last year we i know there's a lot of people who need to do a reasonable amount of business this year just to stay alive and that those who did yeah. take loans and stuff at yeah. some point, they will have to be paid yeah. back, and so yeah, there's a there's a mounting debt burden on, I'd imagine, on a lot of a lot of companies and suppliers. Yeah, we'll I would think I so. Think, yeah, we're, 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 we're lucky in twofold that we're, one, we sell wine and everyone drinks wine. Yeah, and even secondly, in lockdown. We, 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 yeah, secondly, we we work with with yachts and, and fairly high net worth individuals around the world yeah. and and actually normal people. So we, we've got. From what I can see, the rich have some have got richer, and there's some a yes. lot of new, very rich people. Yeah. So I think we're fairly lucky in a lot of senses that our own or your owners and the charterers are still spending lots of money, and there's you were still yacht crew are still employed, and most yachts are still to some degree working and busy. I um, um I was in yachting yeah. during the uh, this is this will come back to your point we just said in a second but like I was in yachting when the global financial crisis happened and the same thing I watched other people get their boats chained to the dock basically in collections yeah. and then I watched other people just buy that same boat as their second boat or a bigger boat like uh, I think the rich can pivot quickly and and earn massively in times like this. I think it was Winston Churchill that said like the time to buy is when there's blood on the streets or something like that. But I think we're yeah. seeing some of that now and I'm seeing it for the second time because I've been in it so long. Uh, and I think what you said was true is like you have this access to this industry where kind of, you know, no matter what, it's going to be yachting is going to be running and you are now as certain countries close up, <laughs> you can just be sending because the yachts will go to the countries that are open and you can yeah. still get them their wine and sell them their wine. And I think you're in a much better place now than shopping on TV, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, effectively, the core of what we do, I think de de like the other week with Dennis touched on it. Effectively, we're a logistics company. You know, exactly. we don't yep. make, like, like the food provisioners, we don't grow uh, our own grapes and make our own wine. So we don't have a unique individual product. What we're offering is a service. So we're a service-driven and logistics company. And for yachts, it's the important part is yeah. the logistics. Is if you miss the delivery, the, the chart gets missed as wine. And and the service is making sure that you're getting a fair and competitive price and responsive and easy to deal with and everything else. But 
yeah we, we all we do is move wine around the world so to to pivot that from yachts actually to go into consumers and to go into in like high net worth individuals around the world was a fairly easy move because we'd already done we mastered the hard part of the logistics the rest was just yeah most normal people we can you know we've got their wine in a box that morning that they've ordered and it's shipped and it's done and it's out of my hair it's a lot yeah. easier than a yacht so yeah, I uh you know it's it, it an easy pivot I, I do think there's a there's a bit of cachet a bit of street credibility too with the kind of the businesses that deal with yachts you know because I, I do think that's the yachting is the upper echelon of high net worth individuals and the rich of the rich and i think if you are in a business with a yacht that that gives you a bit of uh i, I think it gives you guys a bit of a, a leg up on the, on the competition it's, it's a bit of credence i think what we yeah I mean, so the, where we saw the opportunity to even start this is we were using, uh, when I was, I was I actually back to your point, what boat I was on, but I was on motor yacht scat for four and oh, a half yeah. years. Yeah. And we were buying wine from probably the longest established wine merchant in yachting. And actually Jess and I just started investing in wine personally with a view to having a seller. So we were like, we were speaking to our guys in London and buying wine. And we were looking at what we were buying for the yacht and, effectively seeing what was it was more than outrageous in terms of the, the margins were would double right. of what it's worth so yeah. you're looking at the 50 grand order and going we've actually got 25 grand's worth of wine there's not 25 grand worth of service which no. made us realize well maybe we should go and do this but then when you get into it the reality is <laughs> is you have to offer a fair and competitive price i mean so yeah, yeah it's you do get the you do get like the uh Working with yachts, I guess you have the certain uh, stereo- or stereotype or view of the brand is that people think that you're expensive or people think that you're you sh- it's a good service because you must be good if you're working with the yachts. The reality is we, we offer the same prices to people on the street, retail prices and normal, yeah. I think, fairly yeah. fair pricing. Rather than, and that's why we're able to put our wines online without too much hassle uh, in the sense that we're already market rate. Whereas I think a lot of other yachting companies find it difficult to take uh, their pricing and sell that to a consumer where he's, right. <laughs> he doesn't have a million euros or a billion euros right. to waste. Yeah, so, you can uh, clearly look it up and be like, that's twice the price of what it should be. I'm not using that. Yeah. Yeah. Not. I mean, obviously, there's a value to the service and what we do as well. And yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, touching on what Dennis said is, I think the other week is we are literally just logistics thing, and uh, and and you saying is you you've, you've run out of time in the day because we're constantly fighting fires and making plans when yeah a specific wine hasn't shown up and we've got twenty four yeah. hours of delivery right where are we going to find that from and so a lot of the costs at the uh, for yachting tends to be the logistic side of that they want it yeah. so quickly. That the cost goes up because we have to fly a single bottle from somewhere, which is going to cost 60 euro for one bottle, but it's only a 40 euro bottle of wine. So all of a sudden right. you're like, but then you, you want that like wine, you, you that's you what lose, they pay. And... You lose one person <laughs> out of your staff just trying to find that bottle for a whole day. Ah, plus yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. It's not a cost to get the logistics to get it sent. Like, and, and I want to yeah. explain to people as well, like for me as a chef, it's similar as a, as a chief stew to just to order wine. Like, I send an email spreadsheet of what I want and then someone else deals with all of that. Like they just find all of it from dry stores, dairy, fruit, veg, fish, meat, you name it from whatever country they find it. I, if I had to do that on my own, there's, there's no way I would have the time to do that or even come close to getting the amount of quality quantity say Croatia forget it that's it's not possible there's nothing wrong with Croatia but they don't have the market to just be holding on to that stuff in this country in the first place so to get to my point is like I type an email spreadsheet I hit send the shit just shows up in three to five days that's, whenever that's I, want what, I mean that's what you need that's isn't it service. you want you... So when we talk so about service, those... that's what that's what you guys yeah. are doing for for us you you want to have peace of mind that when you press that send button you know, even if you haven't heard back right. from your provisioner in a couple of days, you want peace of mind that that, that it's worked on and it's it's yeah. going to show up. And it's yeah, that you, yeah, I don't need to worry. I no. remember when Jess was chief chief stew on. Um, she went to Lady Lana was her last one, which is 
I think fairly uh, challenging and a lot of ordering to do. But you, you want you've got fifty suppliers as a chief stew. So you're trying to con- coordinate fucking lampshades yeah, and wine and true. soft yeah. drinks and this and yeah. you, you really just want to know that the, when the an email guy, goes out, the wood guy. yeah, it's all dealt with, and you'll you'll get an email back with a, a few questions once they've actually looked through it all and here's the questions answer this right action approved delivered so yeah that is the service but i mean that's because we're doing such large orders i guess to yachts the, the value of the service is certainly not a hundred percent increase in the value of the wine no so yeah, shouldn't think, be no so uh yeah that's all i do is basically order wine and put it on a pallet or a van and it's gone. We rarely get to drink any of the good stuff, sadly. Yeah, not that McCallum yeah. 24. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. It's, once it's 30. So, we, yeah, with the car, coming back to the cast, interestingly, we can we can just bottle it ourselves. So you can bottle it. Legally. And, uh, and we, yeah, we can bottle it as a Scotch whiskey and it can have McCallum on the label, but it's not bottled at McCallum. But yeah, the idea was at some point Scottish Lord overseeing the you know the the bottling process. (laughs) Well, it's like all of these, all of these uh, things. I guess it's like brie cheese or cheddar cheese. It's all of these different sort of areas of champagne or the Roir or Rhone and whiskey is the same. They all have a set of rules to protect their brand. You know, otherwise anyone could make a Scotch whiskey, right? (laughs) Yeah, that's why I'm then, like, yeah, to, so to, re, to re-bottle it would be, a, I think, just a nightmare, wouldn't it? Like, they have no, all that kind of invested interest in protection and, like, because what, what would prevent, like, someone from just tampering with it? It's an so, awesome right, no, we, we'd bottle it for a, for a, or the idea was to bottle it under the boats, like, find a boat or, or someone who wants their Ooh. own bottle with their own label. And uh, and so you go to boat, you know what? Sometimes they do giveaways. We've got clients who do half a million euro plus a year in bottles of Macallan just to have every day drinking on their boat. <laughs> so the idea is, why well, why not buy something that's effectively significantly less? And you can put a picture of your boat on, or your wife, or your dog, or ah, whatever you want. Do I, it as a giveaway. I lost my life. I thought it was to resell it as a whole cask in six years. Yeah, either or, effectively, right. as long as it's sold and we're not sitting on it for 50 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully uh, we can be financially it's, um, okay it's, to sit on that investment for 50 years. That'd be cool. Oh, I'd, I'd, be long, I'd be long gone. <laughs> you, yeah, I you're right, so would I be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be yeah. doing this in, uh, in 50 years, Brandon. Still packing boxes of wine. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I respect you guys so much for dealing with this stuff, like dealing with COVID, dealing with completely oh, changing been... your business during this time. Like it must have been really challenging. So don't look at the future years going forward. If the last year was not an indication of what your life is going to be like going forward, I don't. Think... Yeah, no, you know what? Last last year we had uh, we've got. A, a young boy and we had another baby recently so it's been congratulations it's been man it's awesome it's so been just glad we're, plus a pandemic I'm glad we're sort of, yeah that yeah, as, much, as bad as it was it really it was a really unique opportunity to work on a lot of things that i'd wanted to do for a long time but hadn't found the time so to yoga to set up an effective and yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> sure balancing your shock yeah it was yeah sadly it's it's weird isn't it getting back into i know you've been traveling around sort of dodging lockdowns and yes. doing what you can not to be stuck anywhere yes the rest of us yeah. i've had to suffer just with my the company of my staff and my wife for a year so they they are presumably fairly fed up with me by now I would imagine. Nonsense. Nonsense. <laughs> no, I, I uh, much respect. Um, I just had dinner with um, one of the uh, project managers from, from Larson that I'm working on a, uh, a rather large build for a galley design. And so we went out to dinner. I stopped by when I was in Northern Europe, uh, this beautiful old like German town. And he hadn't been to a restaurant in six months. He hasn't been out of his house. In six yeah. months. So I, yeah, I, crazy. I have been dodging COVID. I have been dodging lockdown. It's been great. 
and I've been thanking my lucky stars. I'm as, I'm as mobile as, as I am and I, as I always have been. But hats off to, to everyone else that hasn't been. And Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, I mean, we, were, we were relatively lucky that we have, I can still get to work and do things and we had to be at an office. But those, those who've suffered in small apartments around the world with their, and actually having to look after their own children... Right. Heaven forbid! And, yeah, yeah. You suddenly realise that you, <laughs> and Jim, children Jim, should be yeah. under, under the charge of someone else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should just have fun with the kids, and yeah. then just oh, you, you so, <laughs> so you're doing the uh, galley. That's right. You're doing this new galley design uh, yeah. projects. Yeah, that sounds I, I really cool. Gonna, thanks, man. I think there's going to be a couple of interesting yeah. podcasts coming coming up about that. Um, I was just um, I, I can't I had quite a chef give it away this but... morning. Actually, and I think he might be on the the project that you're working on up in Lurse and the chef in here this morning. It starts in a month or so. We'll talk uh, about no. it off air. No, this one's Rather not. Dropping the... Yeah, I can't drop any sizes or probably shouldn't even said Lurse, but I don't think that's crewing up just yet. But who knows? Don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah, anyway, I think it's a fun. unique space, isn't it? You found something that's that's not being done. And if I, if it's anything like the deck lockers on a, on a new boat or any of the organization, you look at it and go, who the hell is, who the hell has sort of organized this? And yeah. they clearly have never worked on a boat before. So why not have someone who's worked on the boat who understands how these things work? So you're not trying to retrofit things two years later and yeah. pulling crap out and, and you can be more efficient and you can have a better service if the chef isn't pulling his hair out and, yeah, I don't have any hair. Um, yeah, that was I like know. it was one of the things was... that like you said. Just make sure I don't get slangs coming into the galley. Um, what I've noticed is that there's very intelligent people uh, with great educations in yachting. Uh, there's very also very intelligent people with great educations in uh, these these shipyards because they're they're putting out amazing stuff. And and I'm learning more and more about the logistics of what it takes to to build a boat. And the global logistics of gathering ore, you know, to, to make metal and to make, it's fascinating stuff. But for whatever reason, those two groups aren't talking anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's kind yeah. of what I noticed. And then, it, like you said, with deck lockers, it's the same with galleys. We're like, okay, so whoever made this never cooked, uh, not, not the one I'm on now, but never cooked a day in their life. They're, they're, they, they've never even worked on a boat. Like, so to, to me, that's... Disturbing. Yeah, but I mean, it's yeah, such a unique it's not, uh, work it's environment, not, isn't it? It's an because opportunity. It's, it's I not a, to be improved, but I, I don't. I don't blame them. I just see it as just this, the way things are run now, and they don't understand what their building was going to be like twenty years down the line. Like this thing's still going to exist in some form or, or another. So I just want to try and make them better. Just make it easier on the yeah. chefs. I'm actually like I've, I've narrowed it down. Like I'm actually not doing it for anyone but some chef i've never met to, to come in a boat and well, the galley's sick or, or the galley's usable i mean everyone's going to complain about something but some of the gas i've seen not necessarily from any of the big yards but some of the, you know all yards some of the original gas you're like whoa whoa please don't do that yeah. don't do that yeah it's um it's it would be nice for people to look at it and go actually someone's applied a little bit of logical thought rather than yeah. looking at it and going, I don't even know how they reached this decision. I can't see the, I can't see the process. Yeah. <laughs> like, how yeah. are we here? Yeah. yeah so at least, like, like I said before, like that, <laughs> you can that, write handover notes for them. That and you go, well, well the reason why to, this is going to, to annoy know, you. Yeah. That the re Sorry, I'm interrupting you. So I'll just Sorry. carry on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's going to go. This is what Ed and I are like personally. Like he just goes and then I have to force my way into the conversation. Um, but, the uh love you to death dude. um the uh the disconnect is real and i'm not sure why there's just like no one there's no one talking i guess that's that's all i wanted to say there's so yeah, yeah I'm just i think it's often a lot, lot of a lot of lot of industries are similar and i guess that's what yeah, we're all trying to, yeah. trying to move towards is is more communic and like with all these i mean everything is making better at communication and different tools to help you do different things and yeah, yeah it's an evolution isn't it? You yeah. you know, after so many years of suffering, you go, well, there's an opportunity here. And in five, 10 years time, we'll see you as the number one yacht des galley designer and <laughs> his own boat. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe not the boat, but 
that that trip that's what i was going to say is just, it was just information gathering and it was it's really fascinating to see that side of the industry like i've never been to a shipyard that was capable of building anything over you know 60 meters maximum so now i'm seeing these yards and it's incredible man it's fascinating i'm really into yeah. it like if this is the next part not not i would never I mean, not it's, hope, it's, but it's just the next it's, part of my career it's just a it's it's an incredible thing and and I don't fault the shipyards. I just, I want to be clear with that. Like they they yeah. have enough on their plates. It's incredible. And I don't think like people think, oh, they make tons of money. I'm like, oh, I think the margins are kind of just, they're not squeaking by, but they're not exactly like, ah, yeah. double. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of risk. You know, there is yes. a, a huge yeah. amount of risk. So one Safety. thing goes wrong. Or yeah. I mean, and you, you'd be certain that the contracts are well written, that delays will cause financial hardship. You know, there's penalties right. even. Yes, big so penalties. There's a, yeah. there's a lot riding on each section, I would imagine. And as where you think building a super yacht is glamorous, it's it's really, it's not. It's just a big shipyard. It could be a cruise ship or a super yacht. Yeah. It's totally irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. You start those, those, those you suddenly realize that the, and then, yeah. and then you, you think that like when you come in the industry and you start looking up at these big northern european yards it's like oh i'll get those shipyards it's going to be like perfect like it's going to be clinical and they are they're a massive improvement over the original ones but they're still like it's so cool it's still yeah. like such like blue collar just ship work you know it's like it's awesome yeah, yeah. it's, it, it's raw isn't it yeah it's yeah. like yeah. You, you forget about how much welding and stuff goes into building the yeah. hull and this and yeah, it's a lot yeah. goes into every stage. But yeah, I, I can't imagine the margins are phenomenally huge and mm -hmm. there's certainly a and huge, huge amount of risk. Yeah, especially Massive. with the cost of last year, I would imagine raw materials have gone up significantly. Yes, and, and also delivery of materials. of raw materials. I was at the shipyard and they were saying, yeah. like, just getting aluminum right now is almost impossible. Like Just, just to, to find yeah. the trucks, you can't find it, and then also transport to get it. Yeah, like nothing has been Tran built transport in the, year. Like for, the system uh, is broken. Transport for us has been a, certainly a, the first few months of COVID was just horrendous, and it's I think the pressure going on to the logistics companies was huge. Bet, then coupled yeah. with the stupidity of Brexit in uh, <laughs> December, I kind of forgot. Which, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Well, that's I deal a, with that's that what I worry about every COVID. day. I just worry about COVID is like that underlying band of tension that goes around the entire planet at the same time like i just that's what worries me about covid is that there's all yeah. this build up and this build up and it, just, it takes a couple more things and like boom we're in some kind of like world catastrophe world war or some other bullshit that's what i don't want it's made, but it's certainly made like people more um nationalist in the sense of yes. sort of yeah close down looking after yeah which is a shame and it's a shame you know what brexit in my opinion and it's only my opinion, but it's often right. Is uh, uh, was a stupid idea, and I, I can't see how uh, not working together and as a whole, as a, you know, power and numbers, in my yeah. opinion. But and yeah, I hope that COVID has doesn't have a huge effect on these things. But yeah, it does feel like people are becoming more insular and and looking out less to doing certain trade, and it's becoming more difficult. But yeah we'll see I, yeah. perhaps it's a natural reaction i'd imagine it's a natural reaction to any sort of pandemic or disease spreading that you want to protect yours and those around you so you, yeah it's kind yeah of see how it pans out yeah well i like trying to keep these at, at an hour and we're at an hour and 10 minutes okay my friend all uh, right yeah, yeah well, i do tend thanks to for, waffle uh, thanks for coming <laughs> on man thanks for uh, having me good, uh, i'm, I'm not entirely so sure what we um good. I'm not entirely sure what we were meant to be talking about, but I felt it was, yeah, it was fun. Our, our, it was our fun. Talking with you, Brennan, goes <laughs> like this. It's just everyone else who has to watch us will go, that, are you sure that was an hour? It felt like four. <laughs> Maybe they should drink beers yeah. while they watch it. Maybe that'll help it go faster. I don't, I don't know. If, that's, if that's any that. of you three watchers are watching still at this point, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, huge fans. Thank you for watching. Thank yeah. you for watching. Uh, we're huge fans of them. But, um, Thanks a lot for coming on, man. I can't wait to see you someday, yeah. somehow. Yeah. Maybe maybe in August, but um, thanks, Ed. Thanks for coming on and get the food Yeah, there's always a place for you, us. So, yeah, cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Brandon. Speak soon. See you, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, shit. Was I not recording? Fuck.
I hope you liked that episode with Edward Dunnett. Funny dude. I think you should show up at his warehouse and say you want a tour. Tell him uh, Brennan from Get the Fork Out sent you. I think that'll derail his day in just the best way for me. I will enjoy that. Great dude, funny dude. We had a good time afterwards talking shit. Next up on Get the Fork Out, we have uh, Jamie Taylor. So he was, um, his contacts were given to me by Mikhail Swindles, a very uh, talented yacht chef. And Jamie is a vertical farmer. The ideas behind and the concepts behind vertical farming are fascinating. Now he wants to incorporate into the yachting industry for yacht chefs to get like hyper-personalized sizes of microgreens and crests. Awesome idea too, but we touch on what vertical farming could be for the planet. You know, it's quite expensive now, but his idea is to have these portable grow units around the med for yacht chefs to use. And I just think it's a fascinating concept. We all need to have more of these conversations to talk about how we get ourselves out of this little hole we've dug ourselves into and the planet. Great story, great dude, great chat, and maybe this is a concept for the future to unfuck everything. Who knows? Hope you like it.